Okay, so there's the results. Um, it knows the MAC address. Um, its name is an unknown name, um, and we will hit OK. And we should now have a device connected to our UMS. So let's firstly off, let's just rename that to uh, new UD2. Hit OK. So we renamed the device by right clicking on it and right clicking on the rename section. Now at the moment this device has no profiles configured. On the right hand side when we click on the device you've seen uh, we've got an assigned objects and an indirect assigned objects. This is to do with applying profiles to the device. So at the moment there's no profiles applied. Now what I like to do with a new system is immediately create a new directory under thin clients and call this the global directory. Because when we uh, create profiles and apply them to devices um, we're unable to drop them onto this layer. So if we ever need to apply uh, a profile to all of our devices in our estate, having a global directory is useful because it means it's very easy to do uh, rather than having to apply it to individual folders. So I've got my global directory and I'll create a new directory called webinar test. Okay, and that's now sat under the global directory. Now my new device, my UD2, uh, is on the IP range 192.168.1.90 so what I want to do is to set that device to appear by default into my webinar test section so I'm going to create a new default directory rule to webinar test and I'm going to make it override existing membership and apply the rule when the device is booting. Hit next now I want to know the last known IP address so I know that any devices that appear in the IP range or 192.168.1 uh, will appear or will be on my site that I'm using at the moment now. So 192.168.1.0.192.168.1.254. So I know that any devices in that IP range will automatically be populated into the webinar test section. Okay, we're just going to default that and hit apply rule save sorry first and then we will then apply rules so apply rules now and now you see that in webinar test my device is already there so any other devices that I add into my system on this site that are connected to that particular IP range will by default populate into the webinar test. Now obviously I've done this with a single directory but you could have many directories and many um, subnet ranges or IP ranges to apply to your devices across your estate. So um, it's very useful for pre-configuring devices because now we have that device in the webinar test section I can create a profile for it. So profiles are groups of configurations and settings that we use to tell the terminal how it should behave. So I'm going to right click on profiles and create a new profile. So one of the first things you're going to want to do to your device is, is enable the ability to remote shadow onto that device. So I'm going to create a, a profile called shadowing. And the description is enable remote shadow. Okay. And when you create a new profile, it's going to ask you what version of firmware you wish to apply it to. Now, I only have one device connected to my my UMS and it knows that this is the LX 5.07 version so I'm going to apply my profile to that version and hit OK and what you'll see now once this creates the profile is a menu and this menu is uh, the same menu that we have locally available on our living clients so we want to enable remote shadow, so I know under system there's a section called remote shadow, sorry, shadow, and I will tick allow remote shadowing, shadowing, and I'm going to remove the requirement to prompt the user to allow the session and hit save. Now it's great, so I've created a profile, but at the moment it's not applied to anything. So you can tell that by looking in my thin client section in my global directory, there's nothing assigned either directly or indirectly, and in my webinar test folder there's nothing assigned in indirect or direct objects. So let's take the shadowing profile and I want to make this a global profile. So I will drop this onto my global directory. Now this menu is very important. Whenever you make changes to devices you're going to be asked do you want the update to happen now or next reboot? Now in the normal environment where you have users doing anything on your devices you would normally go and select next reboot. 
But in this instance, I'm, I'm running in a test environment, so I'm going to hit now. OK, so you can tell by the little blue section that was there um, that the device had a requirement to update itself. It's now done that. And this means if I now try and remote shadow onto the device, I should be able to connect. And of course, I can't. Let's just double check that that setting has applied. You can see it has a shadowing section applied under the indirect assigned objects, so it should now work. OK, now there we go. We should have a connection now. There we go, perfect. So some settings require the terminal to reboot. Obviously, in this instance, the terminal rebooted. So when I tried to connect, the terminal was offline and I couldn't connect. So wait for a little bit longer and the terminal's now up and running. I can see the desktop of the device that I was that I'm been controlling my UD2. So just to show you that on the, the local device itself, uh, we have the iGel setup menu. And this looks almost identical to, well, it is identical to the controls that you saw earlier on when you were creating a profile in UMS. So we'll just let that finish. OK, and there it is. The same settings are available. For example, we go on the system and we have shadow and we can see that the settings that we applied uh, earlier on from UMS have now been applied to the device. So there we go. So anything you can do locally on the devices can be done via the UMS. And obviously in the UMS we can do things like locking down the setup for the local user so they have no access to the menus that you're seeing here on the device itself. So let's see what um, behavior we get from uh, a device when we make a change via UMS. So you can see, as the user would see, if they were connected to a device that was being used uh, at the time. So let's make a change to the device. Let's edit the configuration. So I'm doing this specifically to that device. I'm going to change a setting. Uh, let's, for example, create a browser session. So I'll just hit. And I want that to appear on the start menu and the desktop, or just the desktop. Hit save, and I'll hit now. And what I need to do is to get back to my VNC session. We'll see the behavior on the device. So default, the user gets a notification for 20 seconds. And we can just hit OK on that. And there we have it, our browser session appears. So Creating sessions within the terminal uh, takes a matter of seconds. This can be done as a profile or as a local configuration. Now, we would normally recommend doing this as a, uh, a separate profile, so you can have a list of different profiles for different types of connectivity, whether it's to your, your Citrix environment, to your VMware environment, to your RDP, RDS uh, environment, whichever one you want to use. It can be applied that way. There we go. So there's a browser session up and running on that local device. So having seen me create a local browser session on the device, I'm just going to remove that because I would prefer to do these settings normally through creating a profile. So what I'll do now is I'll create a profile. I'll just remove that browser session that we created. OK, yep, save that. And because I'm doing it directly to a device, it'll want me to make a change to the device. So we'll hit now, and we'll get the usual prompt on the device. OK, the configuration change will be made, and the browser will disappear. So let's say I want to create a connection to my um, Citrix web interface. So let's create a new profile. Okay, so I'll give it a name. I know it's going to be defined to that particular version of firmware. And that obviously defines what set, um, options are available in the configuration menu. 
So let's create a session. I'm going to actually do this via browser. I'm going to create a connection to here. Yeah. Okay. Let's just open that up a bit so we can see what we're doing. So I want this to appear on the desktop only. Okay. I'm going to not use the global setting. I'm going to use a home page. I'm going to create a link for save. So now I've made a profile for Citrix, so I'm going to drop that onto the webinar test folder. I want that to happen now. So I'll get back to my session on my device. We get a new configuration. And there we have it, a browser session. Obviously that can be renamed. You can call that to anything you'd like and you can change the icon to any particular icon that you want to change it to. So maybe a company logo or to a Citrix logo, we can do that. Uh, we can also correct directly using directly using the Citrix receiver, but in this case I'm just going to demonstrate using